Yesterday, Louis Rossman of Fudo announced that the Fudo keyboard is out. The Fudo keyboard is built for Android, and its whole philosophy is that it's supposed to respect your privacy and security. So here you can see on their page, it doesn't connect to the internet at all. So they say that it is a 100% offline, 100% private keyboard with voice input that does not require any internet connection to work. Now it comes with pretty standard features of most modern mobile keyboards like swipe and autocorrect and personalization and predictive text. Now I am exactly the target audience for this keyboard because I was using Microsoft SwiftKey. Now, SwiftKey wasn't always part of Microsoft. They bought it in 2016. I had been using SwiftKey prior to that acquisition, and I just kind of kept using it because I really liked the keyboard. But if you watch my video on Copilot, uh, there was kind of this creep over time that Microsoft keeps doing stuff that I don't like. And one of the things that I find annoying is that in the recent versions of SwiftKey, they've put in Copilot. And lately I've become more conscious about, you know, Microsoft having so many little hooks into me and being able to suck data out of various little things that I do. So a little while back, I actually switched and I started using an app called Helaboard, which you actually kind of have to sideload from the F-Droid store. And it's an open source keyboard and it works okay, but frankly, uh, it wasn't nearly as good as SwiftKey. I kept using it and I was going to keep using it, but I was literally thinking just last week, man, I really wish this thing worked better. The autocorrect isn't great. The functionality isn't great. It worked okay. And I think it worked good enough. But here comes Futo and, and Lewis says, hey, this thing really works well. Now, technically, this is still considered an alpha build, but I went ahead and I downloaded it from the Play Store and I fired it up, and let me tell you, it's pretty darn good. So obviously the first thing that you're really interested with a keyboard app is how is the typing experience? So here we are in the Futo app. Uh, if you see the screen, I'm in airplane mode. I've got no Wi-Fi, no cell, nothing turned on, and the typing experience is very good. It's just a normal keyboard, but in that, it doesn't really have any deficiencies. It seems every bit as good as, you know, the Google board or SwiftKey or anything else when it comes to actual typing. The layout's pretty standard. Everything looks pretty much like any other keyboard, but that's a good thing because it's very familiar. So it does come with things like swipe typing, and that works about as well as any other swipe interface that I've used which is pretty decent, but not always perfect. But again, no worse than anything else I've ever used as far as swipe keyboards. It also uh, supports swipe to delete. If I type out a little sentence, um, I can use the back button. And on longer sentences, it allows you to be very precise with kind of where you want to delete because you can change kind of how far into a word you're deleting. And that's a pretty cool feature that I do like from Hilleboard. Whenever I use that, I really like that feature that it has. And so it's nice to see that that's included on this app. Now, obviously, one of the big selling points is offline voice. So how well does the voice work? Well, let me enable it here. You can see it responding to my voice. And whenever I stop, It processes pretty quick, and as you can see, it's pretty darn accurate. And that all happens locally. They're using a version of OpenAI's Whisper model, and that actually comes with its own set of options. So let's look at the options that the app has. So predictive text, right? Whenever it's trying to do autocorrect and things like that, again, it's using AI to do that, but the AI runs on your phone. And so it's got options about whether or not you use that, and you can pick what model you use. Here I'm using the basic English model. There are also multi-language models available, and you can even tune how strong you want to lean on that model, and it's autocorrect. I haven't really adjusted these parameters, but it is interesting that they expose that adjustment to the user. Now, in addition, on the voice input, you can adjust things like whether or not it gives you a sound, or you can totally disable the voice if you want to. 
In addition, you can actually select what models it runs. So you can see here, I've got English-39, that's the default. If you want to run more intensive models, those are available. So if I click on this and explore the models, it takes me out to the website and you can see and download and import more advanced models that I believe would use either more RAM or uh, more processing power, but trades off speed for accuracy and probably battery use, I would assume. But yeah, I mean, it's got a lot of interesting options that I'm surprised to see available in, again, what's considered an alpha build. As far as typing, it has you know, pretty standard available options. So turning on or off emoji suggestions or enabling swipe typing, turning on a number row, a dedicated emoji key, double space period, auto cap, same kind of stuff. You can also adjust the vibration input. So how it gives you haptic feedback when you type or how long do you have to hold something down before it triggers a long press. It also supports a lot of themes, although I haven't really messed with these. You can also turn on and off keyboarders, adjust the keyboard height. But so far for me, all the defaults have actually worked out really well. I'm on a Google Pixel XL. Your phone may vary what you want your stuff to look like. Now, the one thing that shockingly doesn't seem to work is the payment. Through the app, you should be able to go through here and pay them. It's only five bucks for the app, which I think is a pretty good value considering that there's no ads and they don't data mine you. But if you click on it, it says payment not supported in this build. Um, so of all the things in this alpha app, everything seems to work and work great except for the ability to pay them which is kind of ironic and hilarious at the same time. Now, on that end, I actually went out to their website to be like, okay, well, surely I can, I can pay for it here. And if you click on the download, it gives you, you know, you can download it from Play Store, F-Droid, or I guess an Obtanium, which I've never heard of. And here is a link to pay for the thing. However, whenever I go through that, it tries to use swipe for payment and won't load. So... I don't know what's up, but uh, I can't pay them for this yet. I would like to. I'd like to give them my $5 because I really think the app works well. And 5 bucks to me for a lifetime license seems like a good thing for a keyboard that has swipe input, that has voice input, works completely offline, doesn't data mine me, and I can't even pay them for it. That's the one thing that's broken so far. So that's going to be it for this video. I really just wanted to draw a little bit of attention to this app, you know, give my quick feedback, which is, man, it really does seem to be a very good little keyboard, especially considering it's an alpha version. I've really enjoyed the experience so far. It's only been a day. Maybe it'll blow up. But, you know, given what it is, it, it's a keyboard. It, it's not that hard to evaluate. The thing works. The voice works. The swipe input works. The predictions work. It does work without connecting to Wi-Fi or cell service. They don't collect any data. What else is there to really say about it? Um, maybe it doesn't have every single piece of functionality that you want, but it's an alpha. Again, it, hilariously, the only thing that really doesn't seem to be functional right now is the ability to pay for the thing. So look, if you're interested in a good privacy respecting keyboard, I really do recommend check this thing out. It's available on the Play Store for Android. And so far, it's great. As always, I appreciate your time in watching the video. And if you got any feedback, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks.